Burger King was really interesting to me because it's this 60 year old fast food chain that's kind of always been dwarfed in the shadows of McDonald's, but they had this interesting, private, nerdy CEO who um, started when he was only 32, and I really just wanted to get to know him and figure out how he turned this chain around. He had engineered the sale of it just a few years before, revamped it through cost cutting, through viral marketing, and a will to try to win. So Daniel Schwartz was this finance guy at 3G. He was the one who originally thought it was a good idea to acquire the company and they did it for four billion in debt and they've really seen the investment grow compared to a lot of the other investments that happened in the food world. I wanted to understand what happened with Burger King and why that turnover was so successful comparatively and to figure out what Burger King really is doing differently and how they're able to be growing so much with comparatively far smaller budgets than you know uh, McDonald's and I'm going to take you through some of their biggest milestones from the year. In February, they spent several million dollars on a 45 second Super Bowl ad that featured Andy Warhol slowly, methodically opening and unwrapping and eating a Whopper. It became the most Google searched term of the Super Bowl and definitely paid dividends for them. Later that month, Daniel Schwartz was promoted to executive chairman while also being redeployed at 3G's other investment, Kraft Heinz, which wasn't going so well at the time. And then Jose Sill, a longtime employee at Burger King, became CEO. So the next month, I went down to Burger King headquarters in Miami and became the first journalist to try the Impossible Whopper. No one uh, at the time really knew that was coming, um, and it launched a few weeks later. The crispiness was definitely the same. The, the patties do look different, but it was really good, and it definitely tasted like meat. There definitely wasn't a difference, really, that you could see side by side or taste for that matter, but you know that's the, the flavor science that goes into all this. So my story came out on April 1st, the same day that the Impossible Whopper launched as well in a few small locations in the Midwest, but it quickly rolled out to more than 7,000 locations across the U.S. and became the biggest plant-based launch that we've seen to date. Going into it, people really didn't think that Impossible would be able to service 7,000 locations, but Burger King proved it wrong, and with some shortages along the way, it became a, a huge, huge push for the chain. Part of my reporting process was interviewing Daniel in New York, and here's what he had to say about this pivotal year for Burger King. You know, how many you know, brands that have been around for 50 plus years grow 10, growing 10%, and frankly, we still like, feel like we can still do a whole lot better, and I'm very confident that we have the right team, the right leadership to be doing even better in the long run. By November, all this frenzy had started to gain some negative attention as well and a lawsuit came out alleging that the Impossible Whopper is grilled on the same griddles as the Whopper, meaning that the beef allegedly gets mixed in um, through the oils and the juices when cooking. It's gonna be something really interesting that we're gonna be watching and to see how it continues to play out. Burger King is owned by Restaurant Brands International, which also owns Popeyes, which had the crazy fried chicken sandwich launch this year. But you know, going in, Burger King sales are up close to 10% system-wide this year. And the Impossible Whopper is definitely a, a huge driver of that.